Hello and welcome to Asset TV. I'm Laura Keller. We are here in Toronto at the Neo Exchange and we are very pleased to have with us today Mark Stacey. He is co-CIO and SVP of AGF IQ. Mark, thanks so much for joining us today. You're great. Thanks, Laura, and thanks for having me here today. So, Mark, you have an expertise in quantitative fixed income. What are you paying attention to these days in the ETF space? So I think there's, there's a couple of trends in the ETF space. Certainly, uh, the new products coming to market are definitely more quantitatively oriented, and that's because of the amount of academic research that's really been done over the last number of years, uh, particularly in factor investing. The other, uh, the other aspect that we're noticing is there's definitely a pickup in the amount of fixed income product that is particularly quantitatively oriented. And in Canada, we are the first ones to, to provide a quantitative, actively global uh, bond fund to investors. Well, and thinking about that world, fixed income, but also considering equities, what benefits do fixed income products give to investors? So a quantitative approach to fixed income, there are definitely a number of advantages and benefits, and I'll just maybe highlight a few. Great. The first is the size of the market. You know, people think about the equity market and they think from a global perspective, the typical global index has about 3,000 stocks, Fixed income, a global equity or uh, global bond index, has over 22,000 bonds. So it is a multiple of the equity market. And so a quantitative process gives you the ability to really deep down dive on the details of the bond. As an example, the AGF IQ team looks at eight and a half million rows of data on a monthly basis. And so a quantitative approach can identify and evaluate the opportunity and the risk of being paid or not being paid. As well, unlike the equity market where investing in the stock, it can be difficult to understand and predict the risk of investing in the stock. In the bond market, the risk is very well known. For example, credit risk, interest rate risk, duration risk. These are the drivers of the bond market. A quantitative process allows us to evaluate and look for mispricing opportunities in the bonds. Finally, it's portfolio construction. Quantitative processes are very important to portfolio construction. In the AGFIQ Global Bond, we want to provide a diversified set of bonds, but manage the risk, credit, and duration. So we're really focusing on performance value added from stocks or bond selection. Okay, Mark. Well, and thinking about that as you go through all of those variables, what kind of performance are you expecting coming up in the months ahead? So if I think about bonds today versus six months ago or a year ago, it's certainly a better time to be purchasing bonds. And that's because interest rates have gone higher, Bond returns have been negative. There's no doubt about that. That's been concerning for investors, but it is a reflection of the better growth and inflation. So if I think about the potential for a slowing economy and earnings next year, I would think there's a potential for bonds to be positive, but certainly the returns will be lower than they have been in the past. So Mark, and when you look at these different factors, how do the ones in fixed income differ from the ones that you're looking at in equities? Certainly most of the academic research has been focused on equities, and we're now seeing a significant increase in, in fixed income research. That provides a lot of opportunity in, in differentiating across factors in the fixed income space. And there are definitely similarities, but there are differences as well. The similarities would be at the factor level when you think about value, momentum, quality, and carry. Just as in equities, we're looking for cheap bonds to outperform expensive bonds, uh, bonds with good momentum to outperform bonds with weak momentum, low leverage or good quality to outperform, and then higher yielding uh, bonds to outperform uh, lower yielding bonds. The difference is really at the factor level and the construction. Uh, for instance, in a value factor in equities, price to book, price to equity, we would compare those to the universe, maybe the sector. In bonds, we have to compare apples to apples, so we consider the credit and we consider the duration and match those when we compare bonds. As well, there is a difference between corporate bonds and sovereign bonds. So there are clearly differences and similarities. Okay, Mark. Now, as you discuss these factors, you know, of course, that many of those strategies used to be single factor, and now they've moved in a migration, really, to multi-factor. For sure. Why, why has that happened? What, what is the importance? It, there are definitely benefits to a multi-factor approach Without question, academic research has shown that the single factors on their own, standalone, provide long-term outperformance. But just like economic cycles, uh, factors have cycles as well. And so it's difficult at times to predict when a factor will be in and out of performance. So you can bet on one factor. Unfortunately, the long-term performance, you may have underperformance in, in short periods. As I mentioned, each factor can be highly cyclical. And they, in fact, they can be low correlated or negatively correlated to the other factors. 
that provides a diversification opportunity when you blend them together and actually lowers your to total portfolio risk. And for the investor, you get a steadier stream versus a single factor. So there's a lot of benefits to a multi-factor approach. Rates are rising. Right. So what kind of multi-factor approach is helpful to an investor? How does that benefit them? Higher rates, higher volatility. That is something different than investors have had in the past. We've had low rates and low volatility. And so it would suggest that there would be different factors that you want to focus on. But timing is difficult. And so even though we may think certain factors will outperform versus prior uh, years and, and the prior regime, still the best way to approach it is multi-factor approach because it diversifies risk and it allows you to get exposure to those factors that prefer, uh, perform in the long term but you may have uh, periods of underperformance. And so from our perspective, although there may be a change and a change in the tone in the market, the best approach is still multi-factor. It really does diversify and provides a lower risk volatility for the, uh, for the investor. Well, and as we see, volatility is probably here to stay. Absolutely. So definitely yeah. keep concentrating on those multi-factors. Mark, thank you so much for your time today. Great, thank you. I appreciate your time as well. Thank Thanks. you.